I'm amazed at, at what we can do today in photo restoration inside of Photoshop that honestly years ago, just, just three to four years ago would have taken so much longer. I wrote a book on this stuff like 15 years ago and 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 the things that, that took me so long to do back then, you can do in just minutes right now. So I think at some point we all have the need to do this. Uh, we had a storm recently in Florida, by the way, my wife, my kids, my house, everything, we're all good. Uh, thank you for all the well wishes though. I did have a family member that was was severely affected by this and it was in helping, um, helping my brother clean up that I got the idea to do this. So it's not necessarily just about water damage. It's just as I looked at some of the photos and a lot of the water damage photos were so far gone. But as I looked at some of the photos that I saw laying around in the streets and everything, I realized that, that there's a lot of techniques uh, that we can do to help out. If you've got enough information in the photo to start, you'd be amazed at some of the tools that really just came out in the last couple years. Not even, not even three or four years ago. In the last two years, what some of these tools can do for your photo. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now, in this example, I've got uh, two pieces to a photo. So we're going to put these together. I'm not gonna go over scanning and all that stuff. Uh, take a picture, scan or whatever, get, get the photos onto your computer. Um, in this case, uh, one of the pieces has a white background. So we would wanna get that over into the other document. Uh, what I'll do here is do a select subject on it. And that should put a pretty good selection around it. And then I'll just copy it. And then I'll move over to the other document and paste it in. So it's gonna come in here as another layer. Uh, from there, I'm gonna reduce the opacity a bit. Uh, Command or Control T for free transform. And then I'm just going to try to line things up. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use that upper edge right here to line that up. Pretty good. Right about there, it looks good to me. Hit the checkbox, change it back to 100% opacity and go in here and try to fit this into place. Uh, you'll hear me say this over and over again, perfection in this process will be your enemy. So don't try to be perfect. The, these memories don't have to be perfect. They just have to come back to some resemblance of a state that the people that the memories are created for can recognize them. They don't care about perfect, so you need to let your perfect, uh, your perfection quirk go, okay? So to me, is it perfect? No, it's good enough. All right, uh, first thing I wanna do is there's a slight color balance change between the two of them. Um, I, I'll give you two di different ways to do it. You could select a layer, go up here to your neuro filters, and inside those neuro filters is a harmonization filter that you can turn on um, and select that bottom layer to harmonize. I got, I got worse results with this. Um, and most of the time, if I'm doing a composite and I need to harmonize two layers, they work great, but I wasn't getting great results with it. I went, uh, targeted the top layer. I went to image adjustments down here to uh, color, match color down there. Um, and then I'm gonna choose the source, which is the same document, and then choose the layer in that document, which is the base layer. I got better results here. It's a little bit contrastier, but it to me, I got better results this way. So again, just try them both, whatever. You can mess around with these sliders too, uh, as far as the color intensities go. But it got, again, close enough. You got to you got to figure out how much time you're going to uh, you're going to spend on this stuff. I even faded a little bit there. You got to figure out how much time you're going to spend on this stuff to try to make it perfect. Um, again, perfect is the enemy in my book for this stuff. Okay, uh, now we got the little bit of a better color matching going on between the two of them. Now, I always find it easier to work on a composite layer, meaning they're merged together. I'll still keep the other layer, so I just press Command Option Shift E on the Mac or Control Alt Shift E on the PC, and that'll merge them all together into one layer there. All right, um, and you'll uh, well, you, I'll use that over and over again. I always find these tools just to, to be simpler when you merge them onto one layer. Um, next up, let's go to our lasso tool. And I'm just going to make a quick lasso of that bottom corner down there. I've got my contextual taskbar pulled up here. If you don't see it, go under the window menu all the way to the bottom. You'll see contextual taskbar. 
And I'm just gonna hit that with generative fill, no prompt and hit generate. So this may or may not work for you. I, I can't guarantee it. All I can tell you is, is that in the times where I've been using it, I've been amazed at how well it has worked. Then I'll go up here and in fact, I'll do it a different way. And it's again, no, no right or wrong way. The lasso tool, there's also a selection brush, which is just a brush, uh, right and left bracket keys will work. So uh, you can go through there and brush. It just depends what, what tools, what tools work for you better. When you close the loop, it should fill that area in a little bit better. Um, and then I'll hit generate a fill again, and then just hit generate and it'll go through there and should do a pretty good job of, uh, of filling that area in. It's not great. I actually got better results before. So I'm going to undo that because one of the things with the, the selection brush is it has a hardness setting. So that was a very soft brush. I used the lasso tool the first time I did it where I got better results. I'm just going to try that with a hard edge brush, which again, or you can just go use the lasso tool and then hit generate on that one. So again, I, I tried it before I got better results uh, the first time. And to me, that, that definitely looks better. Again, it's not perfect, but good enough. All right, let's merge these all into one layer again. Command Option Shift E. Get everything onto one layer and I'm going to go to my remove tool and I'm just going to paint down the crease and I'll show you a different method to do this in another example and let's even go up here and paint in that little area uh, I'll, and I'll talk about that in just a second but let's just see how the remove tool does and it should do a pretty good job so uh, that to me is a success uh, one of the things that I would also say is and it goes back to I'm just gonna I'll try to stop harping on my perfect is the enemy um, soapbox here but I'll just go ahead and I'll, I'll fix that area and then the last thing I would say is you've got all this stuff out here. You've got all this stuff out here. You've got all this stuff over here. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about that environment. They care about what the people were in. Okay. So I can go in here and I could crop this in and I could cry. If you had damage to all those other areas, nobody cares about it. So I could just go in there and there's no reason to kill yourself to try to fix all those little damaged areas on the outside when this is what people care about. This is what you would want to spend your time working on. And if the answer is to crop all that other stuff, then so be it. Um, okay, so quick public service announcement. I usually put an ad for a course here and I'm not going to do that, although I would love for you to stop by the website. That's not what this is about. This is about trying to get you to set your expectations. If there's a tear through somebody's face, you're not going to be able to fix it. I guess you could try to find other photos and swap heads, but if the lighting's going to be off and everything, and these automatic tools are just not at that place yet. So I'm trying to keep this to something simple that most people can do. It seems simple because a lot of the tools are automatic, but this is advanced stuff. This is stuff that would have taken me 30 to 60 minutes on one photo to do quite a while ago. I wrote a book on this stuff 15 years ago, and it was multiple steps to get this stuff done. So we're at a point where we can do this stuff. And what you're going to see next is actually I'm pretty amazed at where some of the technology has come, but set your expectations, pick the low hanging fruit, understand you're not going to be able to get everything done. Okay, let's get back to another example here. And I don't want to beat a dead horse on the generative fill thing, but I, I just, I think it's worth showing you just, just try it. Um, it, it, it can do so many things when it comes to restoration. Um, so I think it's just worth a try. So I just selected that area with the tape there, hit generative fill. Again, most of the time I just leave the prompt blank and I, I've, I'm amazed at the results that I get over and over with it and how good uh, that it really does. So um, it, there's, there's too many things to cover when it comes to restoration. There's too many different things and too many different problems. And that's why I suggest just try generative fill or the remove tool. Um, speaking of the remove tool, so we've got, you know, creases and folds and things like that. Uh, of course, we could we could try to do it with, with the remove tool and it, it'll do a great job on these things. I could do the whole photo just at once. I don't even have to commit my changes and do it, you know, piece by piece. Uh, I could just go in here, just go in here and just try to, you know, paint on all these areas, hit that little checkbox. It'll do a great job. All right, it'll do a great job and get the rest of them. I, I know it'll do a great job. However, there's also a semi kind of auto way to do this. If you go to the filter menu, you go down here to neural filters and you go to the bottom of your neural filters, there's a photo restoration filter inside of there. 
Uh, I'll turn down photo enhancement. I'll turn down enhanced face. We'll take a look at that in a second. Turn on scratch reduction, and it should do a uh, should do a pretty good job at automatically getting rid of all of those things. Because this photo doesn't have a lot of problems to it. It was just some of those folds and bends and scratches that were in it. And again, that was automatic. That was just moving an adjustment over here. I didn't I didn't touch anything else. So that's going to be a really good tool. Take that a step further and go to something like this one here. So again, we'll go in here to neuro filters and I'll go down to photo restoration. This time I'll leave scratch reduction on and I'll leave photo enhancement and enhanced face on. It's probably gonna overdo it. I, I won't even go into what these adjustments do. Uh, you'll, you'll have more luck uh, in, in some ways just kind of wiggling them around. But obviously enhanced face is going to try to enhance the details in the face. So if you're lacking some face detail, this will do a really great job. The trade-off is it's gonna, it's gonna look very, very smooth. And as I have mentioned a couple of times so far, you've got to look at who your, your customer is for this. And they probably just want this memory of this person restored. They're not gonna sit there and look at and critique the photo that, oh, the noise is gone, it looks a little too smooth, the skin's too smooth, whatnot. They're probably not gonna do that. So just look at the before and after for this one. This, this like, we didn't do anything, right? All we did was open it up in a filter and do that. That's it. And then there's another one down here called JPEG artifact removal that can also help. So there's a lot of, a lot of little artifacting going on uh, in the background there. You can see a lot of little blotches and splotches throughout the photo. So that little uh, JPEG artifact removal um, can help as well. I, I, to me in this one, I don't even necessarily know that we needed it. To me, this to this without ever really touching a tool is, is amazing technology. So uh, I encourage you, again, play around with some of those things, set your expectations, but I think there's a lot that we can do today that really would have been almost unapproachable uh, just three, four years ago, okay? Uh, switching topics to landscape photography, still staying on point to Lightroom and Photoshop. If you're interested in a start to finish video on editing a landscape where I started off inside of Lightroom and then move it over into Photoshop to finish things off, uh, this video would be a great place to go to next.